Today we review the exam, Tanium Certified Operator. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. And welcome to this installment here as we're kicking off the Tanium Certification Series. And today we're going to look at the entry-level Tanium Certified Operator Exam, the TCO. Now, just like all the other exams in this series, I've invited one of the experts who helped write the exam. Wink, wink. Who else would be better to interview, right? So we're going to get an inside look at what's covered and help you get ready to take this exam. So now you'll probably recognize Mason from his popular two-part Tech Talk video series called Mastering Interact. And that sailed to the top of the charts for this show last year uh, because you voted with your clicks and everybody loved that video series which really covers a lot of what uh, you're going to need for this exam anyway so so mason welcome back to the show for those who haven't met you yet please introduce yourself hey thanks for having me back ashley always fun to do these my name is mason dillon uh, my role here at Tanium is a curriculum developer. I have a pretty tech heavy background, so I actually wear a lot of hats within Tanium over the, over the course of a period of time. Um, I've been a TAM, I've been a dedicated instructor, uh, as is pertinent for this conversation. I've assisted with the development of almost all of our certification exams, either with writing questions, reviewing questions, um, building a lot of the lab environments that are used um, within those exams. So yeah, I've, I've had quite a bit to do with the exams, actually. And, and again, thanks for having me on. That is an impressive resume for our topic today. So as a curriculum developer, I'm guessing that means you write the courses that people take? Correct. I was pretty heavily involved in the brand new uh, Tanium Essentials that we just released. You may see it, I believe on the website, it's branded as Tanium 7.6, match the 7.6 version of our console. And prior to that, I wrote the Tanium API Gateway class and also assisted with getting started with Tanium, which we'll also be talking about today. Yeah, well, welcome back. I know a lot of people really liked that Mastering Interact series. It's right down the middle for beginners. So for this certification, the TCO, where would you recommend that people get started? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is look up the exam blueprint. Uh, now I'm here on Tanium.com. This is just our public home webpage. And if you go to customers and then under become an expert, you can click Tanium learning. And there's a lot of good information under here, right? All of our training uh, information is here. How to advance to various levels of product mastery, knowledge, career enhancement. Um, here's specifically talking about the Tanium Essential 7.6 that I mentioned we just released. What we're interested in today is get certified. So we click the Get Certified link. So it'll take us to the Tanium Certifications page. And from here, if you scroll down, you can see all of the exams uh, and certifications that are currently available that you can take. Now here, I'm gonna click on the one for Tanium Certified Operator. This is the exam guide for that, the certification we're gonna be talking about today. And we'll just step through what's in this and talk about what some of this means and, and what you actually need to do to be prepared. Tanium Certified Operator, uh, as you can see here, this very first sentence, this is intended to be an entry level certification. This is not a certification that's gonna go extremely deep, but for anybody who's used Tanium or maybe seen a demo of Tanium, you're gonna know that Tanium is a very expansive platform. There are a lot of things it can do from operations use cases to security use cases, uh, including a lot of compliance and uh, data integrity type use cases. So it's a very broad, but not a super deep exam. Now, some of the things we're looking at as a candidate profile here, what do we expect from someone who's going to sit for this exam and have a, you know, a decent chance of passing it? First, we want one to three years of IT operations or security experience. Now, that does not mean with the Tanium platform. This is more just you working in an IT role somewhere or maybe a couple of somewheres over that amount of time so that you have a good idea of basic IT lingo, if you will. If I say an IP address or I say this computer has an IP address of 1.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1, make sure I get the right number of dots there. You should have a basic idea of what that means. That should not be confusing to you. If I talk about DNS, you don't have to be a DNS expert, but do you at least understand that that's a, a domain name system that lets us turn you know, a website name like tanium.com into something that my computer can find? Uh, on the security side, if I talk about threat hunting, you need to understand that means looking for a threat and what type of threats might exist. You know, What is a virus? What is malware? Things of that nature. But you don't have to go really deep on any of those topics with your knowledge. 
Now, in terms of Tanium experience, what we're looking for is usually about three to six months of Tanium experience. I mean, it's hands on in the console doing stuff with Tanium. But here's where I like to really start to, to dive in and explain what type of experience we want. If you are the type of user who, say, only uses the patch module, and you log in and you immediately click on patch and you go look at whether or not all the patches are installed or you go immediately say, I need to create this patch list or whatever it is, but you never ask basic questions in Tanium, you never take ad hoc actions, then you might not quite be ready for this particular Tanium certified operator exam. Yeah, that's a good point because really this is just the core interact experience really exactly asking questions taking action reporting stuff like that so uh yeah if you're a task oriented you want to spend some time I, I can't imagine anybody though who wouldn't spend time in it i guess i've just been here too long um <laughs> you know just uh, asking questions and interact that's the thrill of using tanium for the first time when you see those results and now it's like millisecond response it's crazy exactly yeah. Exactly. And I will say now this is purely anecdotal. I don't have like the, the back end numbers Tanium does and, and our team that manages the certifications does analyze this and we update things accordingly. But anecdotally, when I have talked to people about their exam experience, particularly people who may not have passed on their first try, it is usually uh, that they didn't have enough practical knowledge about how to ask a question, you know, how to tell which of these options would get the data they wanted or what to fix in this question to maybe drill down a little bit deeper on a specific item. So that's the kind of stuff that even if you're using Tanium a lot, and I've, I've had customers I've talked to who have been Tanium customers for multiple years, but again, they're very specific on module activity. And so the question parts are where they really struggled with the exam. Oh, okay. So that Mastering Interact, we want to make sure people go watch that too, it sounds like. Yes, I will say that particular video goes deeper than you might have to know for the exam, but absolutely that type of knowledge is something you're going to want to make sure you have. Another question I want to make sure just to get out right up front here for like on-prem versus cloud, is there really any difference in the exam if somebody's one environment or the other? No, the exams are pretty much tailored around the cloud, but the only thing that means is we don't cover any of managing the host infrastructure or updating Tanium modules or the Tanium platform, right? That's all the stuff we manage for you when you were a cloud customer. And so that's the only thing that's kind of missing off the exam if you're an on-prem customer. Everything else is pretty much apples to apples for you. Yeah, let's let's. Uh, I'm really interested to get through the, uh, the the exam guide here and see what are the bullets because as I read these, sometimes they're pretty wide ranging uh, and non-specific on purpose, right? Because we don't want to give any people clues about exactly what kind of <laughs> questions would be there. But uh, can you walk through some of these bullets for us and interpret for us? Oh, yeah. So one thing before we scroll all the way down, I do want to talk about the recommended classes here since it's right on the screen. Uh, getting started with Tanium and Tanium Essentials are the two classes that are on the learning path for the Tanium Certified Operator exam. I uh, highly recommend both classes. I will say uh, the getting started with Tanium, while it is the shorter of the two courses, you can probably complete the WBT in less than four hours or a one day class if you choose to have a live instructor. Uh, it absolutely covers the bulk of what's going to be in the exam. Tanium Essentials covers all the module elements you're going to need. But when we talk about that asking questions and taking actions and the stuff where people struggle, that's all covered in getting started with Tanium. So highly, highly recommend taking that class, even if you've taken it, again, as a refresher before you set the exam. Yeah, and I notice in the description up top it says, you know, there's there's some experience plus training, right? We can't un yeah. emphasize that enough because I've been in the industry for decades, taken dozens of these exams across all kinds of vendors, and and uh, if you just have the book. Uh, if you've just read the book without actually clicking around, you're going to get in trouble. You've got to know both, right? Absolutely. It helps. And, and, and that's the whole point of the exam is not only to validate your skills, but to give you a chance to, to learn some things, maybe exactly like we just talked about in areas that you maybe don't do every day. Yeah, and it's worth calling out, uh, in addition to questions, all of our exams do have a, a simulation or a practical portion of the exam. Uh, where you're actually clicking around. Currently, they're all simulated environments. All right, so this first page talks about, again, the candidate profile, the recommended courses we talked about. Scroll down to the second page, and we have the actual exam blueprint. This is where we talk about 
uh, very specific bullet points of what type of topics you need to know or what type of task you would want to be able to complete in Tanium to feel comfortable taking this exam. Now, I'm, I'm sort of repeating myself, but I do feel this is really important. So I'm going to call it out again here. We have asking questions at 22%, refining questions at 23%, and then over here, report generation and data export uh, at 17%. And then finally, at the bottom, taking action at 15%. All four of those sections all include this basic Tanium question knowledge we're talking about, actually, that stuff you get from Mastering Interact, not just how do I say what's my computer name, but how do I say what's the computer name from a very specific subset of computers, possibly even ultimately figuring out a specific computer. I may not know that it's Bob's PC, but I know that there's a computer that has an unauthorized version of some piece of software installed. How do I use a question to figure out the computer name? The software is all I know. That's the kind of stuff you're gonna want. And if you add these percentages up, 60% here is directly related to questions and question filtering in some way with an additional 17% over here where all of that knowledge is very applicable to the stuff you're going to be doing with reports and data exports and so on. So again, I can't stress enough how important this piece of the of knowledge is for the exam. All right. So that leads me to ask then the top right corner on navigation and module functions. And if I'm an exam student, I'm thinking, oh, wait, I don't have, maybe they ask about a module I don't have. Uh, put our uh, fears to bed there. What what kind of modules are you going to ask about there? Yeah. So any module is a candidate to have a question on this exam. However, as I mentioned earlier, it's really kind of high level stuff and it's more generic conceptually uh, and not anything really deep. So for example, let's say um, you're an operations expert, right? You know all about patching, all about deploying software and other related tasks, but you don't know much about threat response. I might ask you a question that's along the lines of, how do I navigate or how would you navigate into threat response and view details about an alert? Well, that's not super difficult. If you know how to get to patch, click on modules, go down to patch and maybe go to patch overview. And I get to the basic patch page. And from here, I can start navigating to specific elements of patch. Threat response is no different. Go to modules, threat response, hit the overview page. And then from here, I can navigate to pretty much anywhere else in threat response I want to go. And so right here in the navigation menu, I see something for alerts. So as a candidate who doesn't know threat response, I'll go ahead and click on alerts. And lo and behold, Here's a list of alerts. Now the question mentioned details. This is also a very common icon throughout Tanium. This is what we sometimes call the details icon or you'll hear people refer to it as the tray or pulling out the drawer. Regardless, if you see this icon and click on it, that's when we're gonna pull out this little side window that gives you all of the details. You've now looked at the details for this threat response alert and you've satisfied the needs for that question. So again, you may not know threat response, but as deep as we're going, if you know one module, you know enough high-level stuff to be able to navigate into another module and find what it is we're going to ask you to find. And I like how you explain that because you're right. Those are relatively universal design concepts across any module. And yep. just following the, the prompts, if you've never used it, I think you'll probably be able to get there. Exactly. And that's exactly what we want, right? We're not trying to trip anybody up. This isn't stump the chump. We just want to know that you have a basic understanding of Tanium. Can you navigate the console? Can you ask questions? Can you take actions, right? If you have that stuff down, we're not going to try to trip you by throwing you a curveball, something that you have no reason to know about because of your particular job. We, we have no desire to do that here. All right. So most of this exam is then asking questions, taking actions. So uh, let's let's get into that, because I notice here it says the first section is asking questions. The next mm -hmm. one is refining questions, which is very nuanced. Uh, so there you got 45 percent on just asking and refining questions. That's really good. It is. Yeah. And I'll sort of read through a few of these bullet points. Uh, I'm not going to read every one of them. They're on screen. You, you can definitely read them for yourself, but a few of them to kind of call out what the difference in these two sections is. Uh, so the first one here, given a scenario, query endpoints for real-time information. This is very simple. Um, I ultimately would want you to figure out something like if I do um, get installed applications from all machines, what's that going to do? It's going to give me a list of all the applications on all machines. Now, down here under refining questions, that first bullet point is given a scenario, 
target endpoints for questions or actions by using natural language questions or the question builder. So the key thing to really call out of this sentence, there's a lot of extra fluff there, if you will. The key thing is target endpoints. I don't want to just ask, get installed applications. I want to be more specific. Yeah. So jumping back into the console, that first question, get installed applications. And you know what? I'm going to leave that little typo there because the natural language partial will see right through it for us. We're okay. Get installed applications from all machines. This is literally every application from every machine. And if I took the time to dig here, you could find that there are Solaris machines in this environment that as a Windows administrator, I wouldn't care about. There's who knows how many variants of Linux in our environment. Lots of things I don't care about. So how do I target this down a little bit? Well, in this case, I'm going to say I just want all of the Windows workstations. So from all machines with Windows OS type contains workstation. Now, what did I do? Uh, we, we basically just added a filter, right? And this is how we started to narrow down and target specific endpoints. I'm still getting installed applications. Windows OS type is another sensor. And I'm saying if it contains the word workstation. Now, when I run this, you'll see I'll go from almost 10,000 results to... Maybe half that is going to be my guess. We'll see. Oh, trimmed it down even more than I thought. Windows, uh, much less of an install base, apparently, in this environment. Only 107 unique results now. So you can see now I've targeted this down to a much smaller subset of machines, much more targeted data. And this is the difference in those two, right? One is just how do I ask a question? The other is how do I get more specific with that question? Yeah, and it said targeting for like taking actions as well. So I'm wondering, would it prefer to say like get online from all machines with installed applications, contains Photoshop or something like that? Absolutely, we could go that route. So let's break down just taking action in general. From this set of results, let's say I want to uninstall Toad for Oracle. I can click this button hit deploy action, and this would take me to a screen where I could choose an action that will uninstall software. And specifically, we would uninstall this package uh, and we could further refine that. You can see here, there's 71 machines that have that installed. With Tanium, I could uninstall all 71, or I could further refine it and pick another subset of that group and only uninstall it from a few of those machines. Now, to your point, a lot of times when we're gonna take action, we are, as a best practice, going to use that online sensor you mentioned. That sensor, and we'll get, actually, you know what? Let's take this one to question builder rather than trying to build this on the line. I think this will be a little clearer for everyone involved. Uh, and this is an excellent place to start if you're new with Tanium as well. So I'm gonna replicate this installed applications down here in my from computers, my filtering section. Add a row, installed, installed, installed applications. Now we talked about Toad. So I'm going to go ahead and put the name contains Toad. If I want to be more specific, and in many cases, I would want to be more specific, I can do is equal to Toad for Oracle. Now, two things to note. Uh, if we say that we want you to be very specific, pay attention to that in the question verbiage. It probably means we're going to want something like an is equal to or an is not equal to. Uh, if we say, you know, more generically, it, it has something like this, then you could probably get away with putting a contains in. So watch for those keywords. It's very important to your end result. The other thing I'll say is if we say equal to, we have to match it over here exactly. Now, capitalization doesn't matter, but I couldn't just say toad and we'd find all the toad for Oracle. It has to be toad for Oracle, just like it was in the results screen we saw a minute ago. Now we've added the filter down here, rather than checking a box for that row, we will now only get results that have this row. Now to make the results a little bit cleaner, we're gonna do exactly what you said, actually. We're gonna add the online sensor, which literally just returns a count of all of the machines that match my filtering condition. And you'll see that here, I have one row that's true and I have a count of 78. Something else we'll look at while we're here. Now, I built this in Question Builder, so this was just very easy. I didn't even have to think about it. But if I wanted to be on the line or I'm examining a question somebody else wrote, this colon indicates that we're looking at a specific name. So installed applications has multiple columns. Name is one of those columns. So when I'm doing a filter, installed applications colon name equals toad for Oracle means that that string that I'm looking for, Toad for Oracle, has to be in the name column. If it shows up in any other column, it doesn't matter. It has to be in the name column to match. And you will find this with some sensors. So for example, you may be looking for a false value. Well, if this is multi-column sensor, say for example, the network details, which has a lot of columns about various data points for your network connection, 
any of those could potentially have the word false in it. If I only care about false from whether or not it's a Wi-Fi card, then I'm going to very specifically say network details colon Wi-Fi enabled or something similar, right? That specific column that I want to find that false in. So I don't get a bunch of false positives as well. Being conscious of the time we have available, there's a lot on the exam. Again, it's a beginner exam, but a lot of uh, details, drilling in, asking questions, getting results, filtering results. How about taking action? Um, what uh, specifically do people need to understand about taking action? All right. So back to this question where we had the get online from all machines. Uh, we're going to use this to target an action. So if I just check true, that's the only call row we've got. I could check other rows if we had them, but this is the preferred best practice way to do things. Click on deploy action. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is uh, select our deployment package. So in this case, I'm just gonna put a custom tag. Uh, now custom tags are really useful for grouping machines together when they may not have a lot of other things that group them together. Now in this case, we look specifically for Toad, but let's imagine a situation where maybe we're looking to have a computer group for all the various Oracle tools. So I found Toad for Oracle and I'm gonna tag those. Later I might find, I might find all the servers that have a particular uh, Oracle database version installed on them and tag those, right? I got lots of options there, but this is very useful for grouping computers together with ways that may not be super obvious, uh, be a little bit more what we might think of a manual group, but we still wanna use custom tagging for it. So in this case, I'm just gonna call this Oracle Tools. And you will notice I put a hyphen there. It's worth calling out. This is space delimited. If I did Oracle space tools, I'd actually get two different tags, one for the word Oracle, to the word tools. Seen that catch a few uh, Tanium users off guard, so just be aware of that. Now, I do have options here. By default, we're going to name the deployment after the package being deployed. We could change the name of this if we wanted to. Could also add a description. Let's say I'm doing this because of a service desk ticket and a particular manager approved of this action. I might want to put those details in there. Just a little bit of CYA, if you will, in case anybody asks questions later. Yeah, I've seen some places where it'll say it's, it's already going to log in the action history who logged it in the time, but maybe like a change control number or something like that. Right. Yep, that's very common. But deployment schedule, I'm gonna leave this as a one-time deployment. I do have options for a recurring deployment and then I could make this action happen, say once an hour, once every two or three hours. Uh, and you're gonna wanna understand how some of these work. So when I do a recurring deployment, do I want an end at date or not? When would I want to end it? If I want to start at date, maybe I wanna start this in the future. Uh, make sure you're aware of those options. And I say that because back over here on the certification exam, that is, given a scenario, automate remediation using scheduled recurring actions. That is one of our bullet points here. So make sure you're familiar with doing that. And then I'll scroll down. I mentioned I could do some additional filtering here. So I've got these 71 machines. If I really needed to, I could add a different computer group. Like I've got uh, Windows workstations in there, but maybe I only want to do these for the finance department. Maybe they're the only ones I care about for whatever action it is I'm taking. Add a computer group, pick the finance department, and we'll further scope this down. And we'll ultimately see less machines over here. I've got to call out the distribute over checkbox. That is so crucial. You are not wrong. Distribute over. This is an important one to know. Effectively, this lets us slow down the action. Now, Tanium is amazing at real-time data and real-time actions. If you tell Tanium you want to make a change on a million endpoints at once, Tanium will make a change on a million endpoints at once, which sounds amazing until you realize half a million of those endpoints are on shared infrastructure because you're running a big virtual server farm. And now you're killing those shared resources because everybody's installing a copy of Office at the same time. Even something as simple as everybody changing a reg key value from zero to one. If you do it on a densely populated virtual host, um, that adds up and, and you can notice the blip. And in worst case scenarios, you could actually end up doing some harm to the environment, even if only temporary, still things we want to avoid. So yeah, distribute over. Um, I always say, if you don't know, if you're sitting there and you're scratching your head and you're saying, I really, I don't know what kind of distribute over I should do for this action, an hour is a safe bet. If you know something is heavy handed, you can do more. You could do a couple of hours. I don't deploy very many actions like that. And if I do, I tend to only go to a few computers at a time. If I don't know, an hour is a safe bet. And I can go down to say 10 or 15 minutes if I know for sure, again, a reg key change. It doesn't take a long time. I just want to make sure they don't all happen in the same minute. Now, once we've got all that set up, 
You can hit show preview to continue. And this is your last chance to look at the actual name of those 71 computers. We also show the IP address if that's of interest to you. You can scroll through this list, make sure everything looks normal. I would normally tell people if you've got one or two machines, you probably know the name of those one or two machines you were targeting, and you can look at it and make sure your list is correct. Once you start getting up to a few dozen machines, you may not know the name, but you probably know a naming convention or a subnet you were trying to get to, some other information where you can just quickly scroll through here and see if anything stands out as odd to you. Anything that would make you pump the brakes for a moment and go back and verify everything else you've done. Once you're happy, hit deploy action, and we'll start deploying this custom tag to all of the machines in this list. And if you targeted a lot of machines, there's a quick sanity check that says, please type in the number, and it shows you the number. There is. And you have to type in the number again, just to make sure you really want to take action on all those machines. Yep. Like I said, it's just that last check. If I'm fixing to type in 50,000, is that really how many machines? Like I'm, I'm really, I know now because I had to type it in, it's that many. And is that really what I wanted? Sometimes it is. And Tanium is amazing for that. Sometimes mm. it's not. And Tanium can help you generate a resume if you're not really careful. So we give you every <laughs> opportunity to be really careful. Yeah, Mason, unfortunately, we're running down on time pretty quick here. I know there's also something about uh, computer groups and reporting. We can't cover all everything. How about uh, reporting? What do I need to know about reporting for the exam? Reporting is really going to cover a lot of the same kind of concepts. So in the current version of the exam, we actually use the reporting feature. Uh, for some of you who may have taken this exam in the past, you'll remember we covered trends. We actually use the reporting feature. So what you want to be able to do is go in here to either explore data and know how to get to data here. So this is similar, but not exactly the same as asking a question. For example, instead of having to know a sensor, I can go all the way down to a specific column. So earlier I used installed applications and I showed you it had multiple columns. I don't, with a report, have to have all those columns. I can grab just the name or just the version and add those to my report. So you're going to want to know how to go in, browse through the data and build a report this way. And you're also going to want to know how to go in here and scan through the reports that are already there, pick the report you need, possibly even make a change to it. So if I load up ADI basic inventory, if I was to make some changes here, apply a different filter, add another column of data, instead of saving to the original report, I would save as and create a new report for this. So you're going to want to be familiar with steps like that. Mason, this is really handy. Um, and again, to our viewers, uh, this is just a, a quick overview, right? It Very requires hands-on experience uh, and the training, right? That'll all get you ready for this. So we're, yep. we're not comprehensive at all. In the show notes below, you'll have some other videos that'll help you prepare. So Mason, as we kind of wrap up here, um, any other tips you've got, just general exam tips that you think, because it sounds like you've heard from a lot of people who've taken the exam, uh, what tips can you offer folks? Because this is probably their first exam from Tanium. Yeah, this would most likely be their first Tanium exam. It's similar to other exams. Again, we're not trying to stump the chump. The bulk of the exam is going to be multiple choice with some practical simulation. The best thing you can do to learn about asking questions and get comfortable with the syntax and building questions is just find an environment and literally start asking questions. You don't even have to know what it is you wanna know. You can literally just start typing in, get computer name or get installed application. And then when you see some data there, think, oh, it'd be nice if I knew, and then try another question, try to find a sensor that gets you that data. Practice like that, practice both from the, the command line aspect of it, if you will, where I'm typing in the exact question and practice from question builder. It's all about being familiar and comfortable with asking questions in Tanium. If you've got that, I think you're good to go. Well, Mason, your credentials are clear. Obviously, you help write some of these exams. You help write the training. You are the most qualified person we could have on here. So thank you for giving us this overview today of the Beginner TCO Tanium Certified Operator Exam. And folks, like I said before, in the show notes below, check out those other resources we've got linked for you there, including that Mastering Interact two-part video with Mason from last year, which was super helpful. Uh, again, a uh, shot to the top of the charts uh, became very popular very quickly because it's so helpful for things like this exam. Also, don't forget, uh, there's some other training and certification links there where you've got information on how to get uh, some of these classes, and some of them are even free. 
I know there's some uh, some nervous, sweaty palms. I've done this so many times in my life, uh, those sweaty palms on exam day. But I tell you, uh, watch these videos, get some practice, hands-on, and uh, we'll be there for you to uh, give you a high five on the way out at Converge. You can take these exams for a, a significant discount in person at Converge if you'd like to join us in November as well. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this episode of Tanium Tech Talks. And until next time, go Tanium.